Hello, and welcome to a tutorial video for CSCI 2824, Discrete Structures. Today, we'll be going beyond the world of truth tables and into the realm of logical equivalences. Let's start with the definition of logical equivalence. Two compound propositions are logically equivalent if they always have the same truth value. So what exactly does that mean? Well, let's take the example P and true is logically equivalent to P. Suppose we set P equal to true. That means that P and true equals true or P. And suppose we set p equal to false. That means that p and false equals false, or p. So no matter what we set p equal to, p and true is always logical, logically equivalent to p. However, logical equivalences will usually be a little bit more difficult than this. And for that reason, I've made an acronym that provides a couple handy tips for solving more difficult logical equivalences. The acronym is APs. The A stands for arrows. Typically, if you see arrows in a problem, you're gonna wanna remove them so that you can play around with the logical equivalence a little bit more. The P stands for position. We always wanna make sure to get the variables into their correct position. And the S, stands for signs. After we've gotten the arrows and the positions correct, we're going to want to make sure the signs are correct as well. Let's move on to an example problem. We're tasked with showing that if P then Q is logically equivalent to if not Q, then not P. To set up your logical equivalences, you're first going to set up a table that looks something like this. I've laid out my steps, what the compound proposition will look like, and what law I'm going to be using. I've also put the logical equivalence I'm trying to show at the bottom here. Well, in the problems you're solving, you're not gonna know how many steps are needed. I find it is always useful to put the logical equivalence you're trying to show at the bottom. Just leave yourself enough, enough room. So let's go about solving this problem. We remember from our acronym that the first thing we should do is play with this arrow, which we can do using relation by implication. This will change the compound proposition to not P or Q. And that law is RBI. Following the next step in our acronym, we know that we want to get the variables into the correct position. We want to get this P over to the right side and this Q over to the left side. Thankfully, we can easily do that using commutivity. So we now have Q or not P. Now, following the third step in our acronym, we want to get the signs right. We see that this Q has a not sign before it. What we can't just add a not to the Q, what we actually can do is add a not not Q, something that looks like this, not not Q or not P. That's because saying not not Q is really the same as just saying Q. And that is called double negation. So now we see that we've gotten the signs pretty close to correct and we've gotten our variables in the correct position as well. The next step we're gonna wanna do is actually bring back that arrow, which we can do by using relation by implication. This will make the compound proposition not 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 q. So if not not q, then not p. And that's RBI again. And so our final step, which I've already laid out, would actually just be removing this double negation. Because again, saying not not q is really the same thing as saying not q. And so again, we use double negation. And just like that, 
using logical equivalences, we've shown that if P then Q is logically equivalent to if not Q, then not P. Logical equivalences can be tricky, but using tips and acronyms like APs, you can make them a little bit easier. Thanks so much for watching.